fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Shots I heard came from somewhere around here, Toto. Look, Kimasabi. Blood. Mm. Hello. Listen. Oh. There. Man mm. calling. He's injured. Don't be afraid. We're friends. Thanks. I'm Jason, express agent. It's no use. They got me good. Did you see who did this? Three outlaws. Loose Slade, Sam Kirk, and Ruth Watson. Then after money? Gold shipment. On way to express office. Did they get the gold, Jason? No. I held them off while the driver and wagon got away. I've seen Watson before. Can you describe the other two? One a big man. Too late, Kimasabi. Him gone now. Poor fellow, he didn't have a chance. One man against three. We go after them? Yes, Tano. Man riding fast. Maybe that one of them. It's Watson, Tano. He's seen us. Come on. Chasing me for. I didn't get any of that hold up money. I know you didn't. Neither did Slater Kirk. The three of you killed a man, and the law wants you for that. You mean that express messenger died? Somebody aimed too good. Bullet hit heart. An innocent man gave his life to break up that robbery. I'm going to bring the three of you in if it's the last thing I do. Where did you leave your accomplices? Back at the crossroads. We figured it'd be better for the three of us to split up. You're meeting them again someplace. Where? I don't know. Tano, it seems that this fellow wants to take the full blame. Who we'll turn him over to the sheriff? Hey, wait a minute. I'll tell you the truth. We was going to meet in Clarksville. We figured nobody would know us there. How long ago did you split up? Oh, three hours, maybe four. Now, that's the truth, mister. We was going to get some money there and head for the border. Get some money? You mean steal some, don't you? Tano will take this fellow back, then go after those other two. Me hear name of Clarksville before. Somebody famous lived there? Yes, Tonto. Somebody very famous. Billy Banyan, the town barber. Town barber? What barber do to be famous? Billy has a reputation of being the bravest barber in the state. And just as handy with guns as with scissors. If Kirk and Slade tangle with Billy, there'll be plenty of trouble. Now get going. Ah! Hey, what are you trying to do to me? I just aim the please. Now set back. If it's any comfort to you, I won't be cutting your throat after next week. What do you mean? You can buy my shop and have it just for the asking. Oh, Billy, you're joking. You can't quit barbering. Didn't you just say that a female woman shouldn't be cutting whiskers? You knowed I wasn't referring to you. Why are you quitting barbering? What are you going to do? Well, I got a hankering to be a lady for a change. A lady? You? <laughs> you think I can? Oh. Nobody ever thinks on you as being a lady, Billy. A female, maybe, but a lady? Huh? Never. Well, they'll just have to change their thinking because I'm leaving for St. Louis next week. It won't work, Billy. You're one of us. A rootin' tootin' two-gun gal that's born to the West. And you wouldn't be happy in no dude place like St. Louis. Besides, it takes big money to live like a lady. Well, what do you think I've been saving my money for all these years? I got big money right in my safe in there. You got a lot of other people's money in that safe, too. And if you leave, where are they going to keep it? Ain't no bank in this town. You're the only one that's fast enough on the trigger to guard it for us. Well, they'll just have to guard yourself. I'm going to be a lady, I tell you. Oh, that'll be 40 cents. All right, but take it easy. Can you change a $20 gold piece? I can change any chicken feed you got on you. Wait here.
Where's the barber? Next room. Back in a minute. Hey, you. Barber, get out here. I ain't got all day. If I was you, stranger, I wouldn't talk like that to our barber. Billy don't take it kindly. Well, you're not me. And I don't care whether he takes it kindly or not. Hey, you. I said to hurry it up. Hold your horses, mister. Here, Joe, here's your chain. Thanks, Billy. Seems like you're in an all fired hurry to get your hair cut, mister. Yeah, quit your blabbing, woman. And tell the barber to get out here and go to work. Well, the barber is out, and I'm going to work on you right now. Oh, lady barber, get away from me. No fool woman's going to cut my hair. I don't like the way you said that. Now, you get out of here and quick. Why don't you stick to your knitting and leave a man's job to a man? Because some women can do it better. Like what, for instance? Like tanning the hide of a nominee that's too sassy for his own good. Now get. I don't take orders from no hatchet fate female. This goes for you and your shop and your orders. Why, you ornery pole cat, you. Hey, get up. Quit, will you? That'll teach you who's the better man. Hey, look out. Oh, a sniveling sidewinder, huh? You're lucky I only skinned your arm. Next time, I won't be so easy on you. Pick up your pop gun. Get your carcass out of here. And don't come back. St. <laughs> Joe, you go out there and keep an eye on him and let me know if he's got any friends in town. Sure thing, Billy. First time I ever saw you come sailing out feet first. That lady Barbara, she almost packed an awful wallop. Oh, it's you. When did you get into town this morning? Been nosing around. Anybody ask you any questions? Of course not. The trouble is with you, you can't help looking suspicious. Here. Wear this badge I stole. Come on, let's get out of here. I tell you, I'm worried. Why should Ruth take any longer than us getting here? Could have run into some trouble. Yeah, and blabbed about where he was meeting us. Roof wouldn't do a thing like that. I don't trust anyone. We got to get out of here. With what? We're dead broke. If we'd only gotten away with that gold shipment. Ifs don't count. We got to get our hands on some money some other way. I suppose you got an idea. That's right. A good one. Why, there isn't even a bank in this hick town. Oh, yes, there is. You're crazy. Where? About 10 yards from where you were sitting before. Ah, talk sense, will you? I told you I've been nosing around. This town thinks a lot of that lady, Barbara. She'll tell you anything you want to know about her. Uh, there's nothing I want to know about that old she-cat. Not even that she's got the whole town's money just waiting for us to take it. Her? Where? A safe in a back room. Safe? That's right. And you, the best little safe opener in the whole territory? She can outdraw us both. There won't be any gunplay. Tell me, yeah. Uh, don't you think my beard needs a little trimming? What do you mean by that? Plenty. Here's what they're gonna do. There you are, Hank. You look like a regular dude now. <laughs> Can't nobody give me a haircut as good as you, Billy. And that new hair tonic you use sure smells sweet. You know, I thought you'd like that. You know folks tell me that they can whip that clean across the street. <laughs> well, see you again next week, Billy. Hi, Joe. Hi. Billy, you was right. Now, take it easy, Joe. Right about what? About that no good hombre that got fresh with you. Oh, you mean he's got friends? Yeah, fellow with a big, thick beard. I never seen him before. They was holding a mighty secret powwow. Find out what they was cooking up? Trouble. They're planning to rob you, Billy. Rob me? Yeah. Why, there ain't a man living that can do that. But there's two of them, Billy. Only two of them? Well, it ain't quite a fair fight. Did you find out what the plan is? I heard some of it. The big one, the fellow with a beard, he's coming in and asking to trim his whiskers. Then while you're doing it, the other one sneaks in the back room and opens your safe. Oh, I see. When I go after one of them, the other one's going to get the drop on me from the reel. That's it, Billy. Don't you want me to stand by in case you need me? No, thanks, Joe. You go down and tell that sheriff to get that jail ready for a couple of crooks. Sure will. Oh, a bearded man's coming in here and asked me to do some cutting. Well, I'll do some cutting, but it won't be on his beard.
Clark Bill's just through those trees, Tonto. We camp here? No, oh, there's a better spot over there. Come on. Where do you think best place to look for Slade and Kirk? That's hard to say. They could be hiding in town or outside of it. The description we have of those two doesn't help much. They may be hard to recognize. Well, they've been on road many days, riding fast. No time shave or clean. Maybe them look plenty suspicious when them reach town. That's just what I was thinking, Tonto. Where's the first place they'd head to change their looks? A barber shop. You want me to go there now? Ask Lady Barber if her see any suspicious characters? No, Tonto. I've heard so much about this fabulous Billy Banyan, I'd like to look at her myself. I'll ride in with you. You go to barber shop and mask? Then the whole town maybe think you bandit. Don't worry, Tonto. I'll wear a disguise. Let's see. I could go as a rugged old Indian scout. <laughs> with a long mustache and a full beard that needs a cutting. I reckon is how I could ask the lady barber for a trimming. Without her or anyone in town getting suspicious. But if lady barber plenty smart, her sure to see through your disguise. I realize that, Tonto. But if I have to, I'll explain to Billy the real reason why I'm there. Me understand, Kimasabi. Me help make you look enough like Indian scouts so you fool even Tonto. You got it straight now? Yeah, I got it straight. As soon as you go inside, I sneak around to the side and crawl through the window. That's right. Now keep as quiet as you can. But if she does hear, I'll have my gun on her before she can make a move. Time scout, Kim Isabi. You fool whole town. I hope you're right. You look around town. See if you can pick up any trace of Slade and Kirk. Me meet you back here. Me hear Lady Barber plenty rugged. You not let her cut too much or her get suspicious. Don't worry, Tonto. I'll just get a trim. Be careful. Now let's go. Hey, wait a minute. Looks like somebody beat us to it. Reckon you could give me a little trim? My whiskers is spouting like weeds, ma'am, and, uh, say, uh, up to about here? Why, sure, mister. Climb in. I'll fix you up good. Take your hat off. Never mind the hat. I'm a-keeping it up. You're, uh, new in this town, ain't you? Yep. <laughs> That's right. Just got in. Uh, what's your trade? Oh, <laughs> might say I, uh, was a hunter. Oh, a hunter, huh? Well, that's mighty interesting when you, uh... Do your hunting, do you uh, usually wear a mask? A mask? Huh. What do you mean, ma'am? Well, most people wouldn't notice it. But it's a barber's business to study faces. And yours is mighty tan, except in around the eyes. And that's the outline of a mask, mister. An outlaw's mask. Now, hold on, ma'am. Don't move or I'll cut your gullet. I know all about your little scheme to rob me. Look, Mrs. Bannon. I know outlaw, and I didn't come here to rob you. Oh, so you even used a fake voice on me. I ought to do away with you right now. I'm not who you think I am, Mrs. Bannon. And I suppose you're not working with a friend. Yes, of course. And I suppose he's not due here in a little while like you told him to. He's coming here, but only to help... Oh, shut up. I've heard all I want out of you. And when your friend sneaks in that back room, I'm going to let you have it first and then him. And nothing you'll say will change my mind. Your friend's a little late, ain't he? I take it back. He's right on time. You in there. Come out with your hands up or I'll put a bullet through your friend's head. There we are, Tuttle. Dad, burn it. It's the first time I was ever tricked by a man and he got away with it. Kimasabi, what happened? It seems that Mrs. Banyan was expecting unwelcome visitors, Tano, and mistook us for them. Oh, so there's an engine mixed up in it, too. Where's that other no-good hombre that I threw out of here this morning? What she mean? Oh, don't play possum with me, you ornery polecats. I know why you're here, and you can kill me, and I won't tell you the combination to my safe. We don't want to rob your safe, Mrs. Banyan. All we want is some information. Well, that's a mighty pretty speech, mister. How can I believe you? You got any way of proving it? Yes, ma'am. Just one way. Here's your gun. Would I give it back to you if I expected to rob you? Well, I'll be darned. Now, will you tell us who you were expecting? Well, I don't know rightly, mister, but I had a warning that a bearded man and another armory was coming here to hold me up. And maybe they're still planning to. 
And if they're the ones that Tano and I are after, I'd like to get a confession out of at least one of them. You think there's a way of doing that, mister? There's a way of trying to do it. Time to trim the whiskers of an old galoot who's been out prospecting for the past six months? Well, sure. Send him in. <laughs> well, I mean me, ma'am. Oh, say, you could use a trimming. Climb in, mister. Thank you. <laughs> Do not make noise. We know your plan. Scared or not? Head clear now. We can't let him get away. Go after him. Bring him back. And what about other one? I'll take care of him. I'll give him a few minutes to get settled in there. Maybe may be back fast. Nothing like making sure, Indian. You got a mighty fine bushel of wheat here, mister. Say, friend, you're mighty fidgety. I'm not used to sitting still for so long. Say, did you hear something in there? Well, no, lady, you're just imagining things. Oh, no, I'm not. I heard somebody trying to sneak in my back room. There you are. Drop that gun. I got a covered loot. Get the weapon that's safe. Yeah. Well, don't be all day about it. Hey, who are you anyway? I'm a man who takes what he wants, even if he has to kill to get it. Oh, you don't say. Then you must be one of them sneaking coyotes that held up the express wagon in Eastland and killed the agent. That's right, lady. I shot him. And you'll get some of the same medicine if you make one funny move. What's the matter, Lou? Can't you open it? Uh-huh. You must be slipping. Get in there, you. Get him, mister! Nice work, mister. Say, I'm sure glad you warned me about that mask of yours. You know, you look mighty different without that beard. <laughs> Say, you are that same hombre, ain't you? <laughs> Reckon you could give me a little trim? <laughs> oh, the duration. <laughs> Oh, me glad you all right. Me get other one. Him out cold. Good work, Tonto. And with that confession Kirk made, we have a clear case of murder against the two of them. 
Thanks to you, ma'am. Oh, it weren't nothing. I like to see army crooks put behind bars. Billy! Hey, oh, Billy! Excuse me. Certainly. Hey, Billy! Oh, stop your caterwauling. I've been telling folks you was planning to leave town, Billy, and they're holding a mass meeting to stop you. They say we just can't get along without you. Won't you change your mind? Well, after all the fun I've had today, I guess I'll have to. You know, like you said, Joe, I'm a two-gun gal. And if I go to St. Louis, why, I just naturally couldn't stand the quiet. <laughs> say, didn't I send you to see the sheriff? I just now located him, Billy. He's coming right over and catch them two killers when they try to hold you up. Well, you darned old fool, they've already been caught. What? You mean you've done it all by yourself? Oh, of course not. These two here... Why, they're gone. Who's gone? Why, that masked man and that engine. A masked man, you say? Why, I hear tell of him. They say he always shows up when killers need catching. And you know who he is? You're darn right I know. There's only one person he could be. The Lone Ranger. Hello, Bill. 